Hi everyone, we're going to see when the ANSI tables are applicable and when they are not applicable. First, they are applicable for inspection by attributes. What I mean is that it needs to be very clear whether a sample is good or not good. It is conform to specs or not conform to specs. It is in this color or not in this color, right? If you have continuous data 1.7, 2.3, 2.6 and so on, you need to convert them into some kind of yes, no type of data. Second, it is applicable to lot by lot inspection. What does this mean? It means the supplier keeps producing the same products for the buyer and then and keeps shipping them. And it's different batches, but it's continuous, lot by lot. It's not isolated isolated lots, right? Um, it's not designed for the one-shot order. Okay, I just start to buy to, to buy from this supplier. I don't know them. Or maybe I buy from this supplier once every six months. It's That's not what this standard was designed for. There's another standard that deals with isolated lots. Uh, and that other standard does not use the AQL, which all Asian suppliers uh, that deal with export customers are, are familiar with. Now, it, it deals with limiting quality. That's another concept. And the problem is that, you know, Chinese suppliers are just starting to get familiar with the AQL and what it really means. <laughs> and most buyers don't want to start teaching again. You know, okay, here's this other standard and here's, here's how it works. Forget about everything about the AQL and we're going to do like this. Suppliers are not going to be really happy about that. They're going to be very wary, right? That's why uh, virtually all buyers who do Prishima inspections <clears throat> use the ANSI tables uh, with the, the AQL for lot by lot inspection. And the standard uh, says something, it has this note that the user is strongly advised to consult the OC curves to find a plan that will yield the desired protection. Okay, we won't go in, into the OC curves into this video, it's for another video, but um, what does it mean? You know, advised to consult some numbers to find a plan that will yield the desired protection. Okay. In the standard, there's also this table <clears throat> that shows you that, okay, consumer's risk is that 10% of the lots will be accepted even though they are above the AQL, even though the number of, the proportion of defects is above the AQL. So if your proportion of, uh, if your AQL is 1%, you, in theory, you don't want a batch that has more than 1% of defects. But look, let's say, your sample size is 200. Well, you might receive some batches with more than 4% of defects. That's That should be a shock to many buyers, but that's how it works. Uh, the, key, the key to understand is that this standard assumes that the supplier is good. All right? You already work regularly with, regularly with this supplier. It's assumed that they're proportion of defects is acceptable, right? Um, so be careful, don't uh, misunderstand the, the AQL. The probability that you get a batch that was accepted and uh, that has defects way beyond the AQL that you have set is not negligible. Now let's talk about switching rules. And more than 95%, I would say maybe 99% of inspection in Asia are uh, conducted in normal severity, but a very important part of the standard is that there are three types of severities, and it starts with the normal severity, but then if the supplier gets up to a certain score, it goes to reduced inspection. Um, so, which means you know you pick less, fewer samples, and it's even easier for the supplier to pass. Now, if they fail at least two of five or fewer conse consecutive lots, that's really not many. But if they fail a few times, they get to tighten inspection, where right there, okay, the number of samples to check is the same, but it is no longer assumed that the supplier does a good job. 
so it's harder for the supplier to have a batch accepted and after that if they do a good job they get back to normal if they keep doing a bad job discontinue inspection so it's very important for buyers to understand that just sending inspectors is not going to solve the problem you need to to help the supplier or you know or push them to to improve or just stop working with them and find find a better one now let's talk about single versus double plan um, again, this was covered in in another video, but what I want to touch on here <coughs> is that double plans are more efficient than more efficient than single plans. They require less samples to be checked, and another big advantage of double sampling plans is that in the cases that are not very clear, you know, a little bit borderline. Uh, in a single sampling plan, there's a lot of pressure from the supplier. Well, the limit is 10, you find 11, but you know, is this really a defect? Blah, 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 blah. With the double sampling plans, um, when it's borderline, very often there's a, a second step, you know, checking some more samples, right? Um, so it removes some of this psychological pressure. Um, and just to show how it is more efficient, in a single single sampling plan, it's always the same number of defects that's checked, right? Whatever the proportion of defects. On average, in a double plan, it goes up when it's close to the AQL, then it goes down down again. But it's very you know most of the time it's below the single plan, meaning less samples to check. So it's more efficient. Here are a few um, uh, tables, for a few charts from the, the standard. There are also mul multiple plans. It's, it's more complex than double plans. There are also sequential plans that's part of another standard that would be even more uh, efficient. All right. Now, what was the conclusion for buyers? Uh, be careful. With double plans, there's a big temptation for the inspector that's a little bit lazy to just under-report the number of defects and say, oh, actually, yeah, this batch is good, so I don't need to go for the second sampling and you know the second part of the inspection. I'm done, you know, I, I have finished. And also, it's hard to predict in advance the amount of work, so that's why third-party inspection agency agencies usually try to avoid um, anything other than a single sampling plan. Alright, thank you. I hope it was clear and helpful. And if you want to read more articles or view more videos on this topic, you're welcome to come to my blog. It's on qualityinspection.org. Thank you.